to him who overcomes, I will grant to eat of the tree of life. Let my teaching fall like rain, and my words descend like dew. In the beginning, with 32 mystical paths of wisdom, engraved Yah, the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, the living God, King of the universe, El Shaddai, merciful and gracious, high and exalted, dwelling in eternity, whose name is holy. He is lofty and holy, and he created his universe with three books, with text, with number, and with communication. The Sefer Yetzirah the Book of Formation, as some might say, the Book of Creation, as it describes how the whole of creation was accomplished through the letters of the Hebrew alphabet. How many volumes have been written about this slender cryptic text, which is one of the most ancient in the world, and a cornerstone of not just Jewish spirituality and mysticism, but all of Western occultism. As the key to the door of a great and magical library of epic proportions, it is the foundation of a profound and scholarly field of study, diligently tilled by giants since, as legend would have it, the days of the patriarch Abraham. For the sake of time and space, therefore, even if they are theoretical constructs, meaningful only to the earthly plane and not necessarily on a continuum, we should assume that readers already have some familiarity with the Sefer Yetzirah and the Tree of Life, Etz Chaim, which grows from it. Whilst we shall recap on some of this foundational knowledge, we have not attempted to rework a full-scale exposition on aspects already very well covered elsewhere, such as fulsome descriptions of each Hebrew letter, individual Sefer, and the multitude of pathways between them. We have, however, shared some relevant extracts from the Geo Meebs Tarot Majors course, the English translation of which we published during the powerful astrological configuration of February 2020. This is in the Force and Fortune chapter. Our aim is rather to communicate with those of our friends who may have reached a sticking point in their Kabbalistic studies and are looking for a lump to help point the way towards the next phase of their journey. If we're able to indicate one or more of the proverbial gates of light by helping someone to view the field where the tree is planted from a fresh perspective, then so much the better. We shall also refrain from over-intellectualising and shall try to maintain a lighter touch in conveying certain information rather than attempting to lay down the law. Not only is this a prudent measure given the genius types who've already expounded on the subject of Kabbalah at great length, depth, height and width in every direction, but also because intellectualization of the supersensible becomes an obstacle to direct spiritual experience and can lead to a conceptual or occult imprisonment. This is true for Hegelians and Marxists and even anthroposophists. That's from a letter of Valentin Tomberg to Bernard Martin, 1956. Ambiguous symbols may, in this respect, be considered more useful when it comes to imparting spiritual information that are unambiguous concepts.
than our unambiguous concepts. It is the art of Kabbalah we hope to immerse and be immersed in, not necessarily the science. Most will be aware that the main body of contemporary Kabbalistic teaching can be traced to the work of Zohar scholar Rabbi Isaac Luria and the school which developed this work after his death, the Kitvai Hari, the writings of the Ari. So influential was this school that it became the bedrock of mainstream Jewish theology and Lurianic Kabbalah to this day, forms the basis of Jewish mysticism. It is the Ari's redaction of the Sefer Yetzirah, later redacted again by another great scholar, Vilna Gaon, the Gra, which we have referred to and reproduced throughout this text. There are countless artistic renditions of the Tree of Life in circulation, and it is frequently studied as a standalone symbolic structure, even without clear reference to its roots in the Sefer Yetzirah, of which it is an illustrative representation. There is a famous image which first appeared on the cover of a 15th century translation of the Kabbalistic text Sha Aura Porti Lucis, Gates of Light, written by Spanish scholar Joseph Gicatilla towards the end of the 13th century. Scholars have traced the origin of the design to German-born Catholic humanist Johann Reichlin. Reichlin was influenced by the Renaissance Christian Kabbalist Giovanni Pico della Mirandola, who saw in Kabbalah a perfect harmony with and validation of Christian theology. At the start of The Gates of Light, an esoteric Torah study which incorporates an encyclopedia of holy names, Kikatila warns a disciple against studying Kabbalah for the wrong reasons. The attributes and names of God are not to be used for personal gain of any kind, but for the sole reason of becoming closer to God and gaining God's blessings. He writes, How could a mortal conceive of using his holy names as an axe is used for hewing wood? Who would connive to cast his hand on the crown of the kingdom and then dare to use it profanely? Wasn't it our sages who said, anyone who utters the name of God as rendered by its letters has no portion in the world to come? This warning is echoed in an alchemical text, the golden ass of Eplusius, the hero of which is turned into an ass because he unlawfully steals and misuses the potions of a sorceress. He was tempted into this transgression by the desire to fly, but once transformed into an ass, he wanted nothing more than to be human again. Ruchin's evocative image features an easily recognisable and traditionally accepted construction of the Tree of Life, composed from the top sphere of the tree to its bosom, bottom of the Sephiroth, Kita, Hokma, Bina, Chesed, Gvira, Tefreth, Netzach, Hod, Yesod and Malkuth. Whereas most commentaries and explanations of the Tree of Life symbol begin at the top with emanations from Mind Sof, running progressively further down the tree via Kita, Hokma and Bina, Kikatila begins at the base in the kingdom of the Shekinah, emphasising the ecstatic mystical ascent and return to God through the Sephiroth. This is a useful contrast, for just as divine grace and benediction flows down to humanity through the subtle realms, so do the strivings and prayers of mankind reach upward through this longed-for spiritual influx. The above and the below are always in a perpetual relationship with one another, at times a savage and passionate affair, at others a cerebral romance. May God give you of the Jew of heaven.
the downward action is sometimes seen or experienced as a lightning strike, otherwise as the falling rain of Deuteronomy, or the proverbial dew which descends. This reference to dew is instantly evocative, evocative of Rosicrucian and Rosicrucian styled occult works of art and literature. One school of thought holds that this mysterious dew is a substance secreted from the brain of an initiate performing the great work, whose body is transformed into a temple and is a source of condensed wisdom. And here we are reminded of the words of a friend who once said, dissolution is the secret of the great work. Though he later admonished, solve et coagula. The allegorical gathering dew is an important component of hermetic alchemy, indicating the subtle energies which are cultivated in the course of the work and serve to enhance the consciousness of the neophyte. This dew, an aspect of the rose in rose crux, becomes in itself the substance to be worked. For those who start, affliction reigns with vinegar but for those who finish, joy reigns with laughter. It is within the gates of light that the Sephiroth are connected with particular names of God, such as Malkuth, the kingdom, is with Adonai, Lord or Master. In this scheme, the kingdom, through Adonai, receives the everflow from the upper spheres and sustains the structure of the tree. The arcane quality of the sacred Hebrew language by which the Kabbalah is received is continually revealed throughout the text. We learn, for example, that Adonai shares a root meaning with Adanim, used in reference to the silver sockets which hold together the dwelling of the Shekinah in the desert, the tabernacle, also known as the tent of congregation. Gigatilla notes, the Torah says there were 100 Adonim in the tabernacle and that in order for them to receive the everflow from the divine presence, the Jew is required to say 100 blessings a day, one for each socket. If he says fewer, then the channels are damaged and the everflow is diminished. The holy names are central features of Kabbalistic or occult works, and none of those names are as revered or as feared as that of the Tetragrammaton. Considered so sacred, there are multiple prohibitions on its utterance. Much is written of it in the Gates of Light, and this extract from the fifth gate of the sixth sphere, Tifereth, is of special relevance to the present study. We learn from this teaching that the holy name, the Tetragrammaton, is the pillar to which the upper and lower spheres cling. They interconnect in ascending order and they are energised in descending order. This particular name, which is the Tetragrammaton, is compared to the trunk of a tree, with its branches being formed by the other holy names, all of which stem from it. Each letter of the Tetragrammaton is infused with immense spiritual significance, with the catalytic letter Yod, a spark from which the entire alphabet comes into being, defined as the beginning of creative thought, the wonders of wisdom and the hidden wisdom. We are told that the world is created from this place of hidden wisdom, which is called the limitless will, and this is also called Machasva, thought. Of this profound creative process it is said, how deep are your thoughts? And it is deep, deep down, who can discover it?
The essence of Yod is associated with the Sefer Hokmah, whilst Kita, which in itself means crown, is connected with the crown of Yod, which teaches of the sphere Kita, the essence of which is called Ein Sof, no end. Binar is then associated with the second letter of the Tetragrammaton, which is Hey, for it is to Binar that all life clings, and all spheres below it draw their life, as well as all the spheres above. The third letter of the divine name is Vau, and the essence of this letter is said to infuse the following six Sephiroth, three of which are said to be above Vau, Gedula, Gibura, and Tifereth, whilst three are said to be below Vau, Netzach, Hod, and Yesod. The fourth letter of the Tetragrammaton is the second He of the divine name, and is associated with the sphere of Malkuth which is the essence of the unity of the unique name of God, blessed be he, and thereby signifies the absolute principle of unity. And a river went out from Eden to water the garden, and from there, very pared, it separated and became four heads. These four heads are said to be the four encampments of the Shekinah, located in the Sephiroth Malkuth, the temple, the kingdom. The kingdom. The Sephirakita is associated with the divine name, it has resonated through time and space since it first appeared in the book of Exodus, verse 3, 14 when Moses heard it spoken from the burning bush, which we have looked at in more detail in our chapter, The Lost Goddess. From Exodus, the name found its way into the Zohar, from which it would become central to Kabbalistic law. In our Fortune of Force chapter, we look further into the depths of the Tetragrammaton, this time from the perspective of a master of the Western mystery tradition, who is better versed than most in both the art and science of Kabbalah, is Geo Mebes. We shall continue here a little while with the Gates of Light, which also contains some enlightening information about the mysterious sphere of the earth, spelled stat, within that text. Anyone familiar with the design of the Tree of Life will be aware that it contains three pillars or lines. The Tetragrammaton with Hokmar laid the foundations for the earth. He prepared the heavens with Tevuna, and with his dart the interiors of the earth were split open. Gikatila explains further that the three Sephiroth, Hokmar, Bina and Arth, wisdom, understanding and knowledge are drawn from the crown of the tree, which is Kita, from the edge of the letter Yod. Here we are told that the earth is located on the middle line, usually called the middle pillar of the tree, and that this little middle line is the letter Vau, because it bears two arms, El from the right, Elohim from the left with him in the middle. Thus it says, wherever you find the word Darth, it is the third and it arbitrates between the other two. The same as for Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. Jacob is the third and he is the arbitrator, just as Darth is the third and also the arbitrator. It is only by passing along the middle line with the essence of vow, that one might fully ascend the tree of life, up as far as Kita, and even beyond it to the high spiritual realm of Ein Sof. Kikatila believes that Israel alone among the nations can access this middle pillar, but should Israel fall into sin and become alienated from Darth, they will lose this birthright, 
and be given over to the seventy princes and the nations of exile in the diaspora. Thus my people have suffered exile without doubt. Isaiah Because you have rejected doubt, I reject you as my priest. Because you have spurned the teaching of your God, I too will follow, forget your children. Isaiah Not only does Dart arbitrate between all the Sephiroth, constituting the balance between right and left, between Hokmar and Bina, Gejula and Gavura, and Netzach and Hod, it also mediates between the upper and the lower spheres. For the middle line, which is the essence of Darth, passes through the middle of all, like the trunk of a tree, until it reaches Ein Sof. Similarly, the name, Tetragrammaton, which is the middle line, and which is Darth, is the arbitrator moving vertically between Ea, at the top of the tree, and Adonai, at the base of the tree, and it is the horizontal arbitrator between El and Elohim. This is the concept of Darth. As we see from this wonderful description given in the Gates of Light, the middle pillar of the tree, through the divine knowledge of Da'ath, Glory, Tifereth, through to the crown of Keter, and infinity represented by Ansof, it is the way to go if we want to fully ascend in the manner of Israel, without running into a dead end in one of the side branches along the left or right hand pillar. The Sphere of Darth as arbitrator and balance between the pillars of mercy, Gijula, and judgment for severity, Gibura, is of immense significance. And here we ponder that the tree of knowledge, of Dart, is in this way a feature of the tree of life. A point on which to ponder at length and digest in private. To art is a sphere that includes all the spheres, the source of the spring, which has no end or final purpose. Dart is beyond me. It is a mystery. I cannot fathom it. Themselves.